In this video, I'm going to provide you with four different ways to maximize your storage space in the attic. These are sometimes, these methods are sometimes approved by engineers. You would need to contact an engineer yourself to make sure that this is a method of construction you could actually use. So if you're looking for a little more room um, in the attic and you need to remove your um, purlin braces, the braces and the purlin, something like this. This might just be what you're looking for to give you a little more room. But the main purpose of this video is just to show you four different ways to frame the walls. So this is actually a wall that would be framed, your stud 16 inches on center or 24 inches on center, depending upon what the structural engineer would recommend. And then of course you could use some um, hurricane ties or these were H2.5s I believe, it's Simpson product. Um, you can use something like this to tie the plates to the rafters and give you a good idea. Um, a little twist strap, something like that. You could use other types of hardware, whatever would work. And the other type of wall here, you would use blocks. You would frame a wall and then use blocks. Something like this is going to help you with your drywall. You're going to be able to run the drywall up here. And then up here, if you are going to use drywall or some type of paneling, um, this would work a little better than the example on the other side. So there we have it, some blocks. And uh, there are the first two types off to the next two types. Okay, here we go again. There is the roof structure. And this will be two other ways you can use. Instead of using a top plate on something like this, you can actually use some snap a line across the top, you know, level up on one side, snap a line. Now, this method w might not be the best way. And then again, it might provide you with a better way to um, do this. And I, the reason why I'm saying that is if you have a sag in the in the roof, you're going to and you need to put the wall straight. Um, this could be difficult with this way right right here. It might make it a little easier because you're going to be able to put pressure on the um, on the rafters. Um, but again, these are just examples. I really don't want to go into too much detail on how to do something like this because you might not be allowed to do it anyway. Keep that in mind. So here we go. You can cut the cut the wall studs to tight to where they fit underneath the rafter and then use a piece of plywood, put a couple of 8D nails in, maybe four nails and four nails. This can be a little longer. Or you can use a strap, some type of building hardware. Again, you would need to check with your structural engineer to get more information on that. Um, here, would, this would be the other way. You would simply take the stud and then cut it at the top. And this way you would nail to the side here. So this would provide you with support this way. Um, and again, like I said, this would be something you would need to check with a structural engineer before you would do something like this. So here's a couple of different ways to do something like this. Now, one more thing I would like to cover is that this type of a system would be putting a lot more pressure on your ceiling joists. And if your ceiling joists are already undersized, like they are in older homes anyway, you know, if you have a two by four for ceiling joists and it's spanning um, 14 feet, you're way off, you know, and then you're going to build a wall on top of it and then support it with some uh, and help to support the roof system. You, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on your ceiling. And of course, uh, if your ceiling joists aren't designed for that and the rest of the building isn't designed for that to carry the load, then um, you're going to be opening up a big can of worms. But I had to mention that, you know, uh, like I said, if you're looking for more space in your attic, I always recommend to uh, contact a professional structural engineer before uh, doing something like this on your own. But if you think it's going to work um, then uh, and you're willing to assume all the liability, then knock yourself out. Uh, do what you want and... Uh, well, uh, you can let me know what happens, huh? In 10 years or something down the road, you can let me know, hey, it worked. 
And like I said, I've seen a lot of things that, that work just yeah. fine. I see, I've seen, you know, undersized joists carry loads you wouldn't believe, and the building would have a little bit of, uh, you know, the, maybe the ceiling joists were sagging a little, uh, maybe the walls were sagging, maybe the floor was sagging a little, but um, everything seemed to hold up just fine. So there are um, certain cases where you are going to build something and it's going to be undersized according to a structural engineer and you won't have any problems but it's those times that you do and uh, you know you do put some extra pressure pretty soon you're starting to see some big cracks in the drywall it's outside the stucco the floors um, you're, some of the lumber starting to fail this is when you uh, really create some problems so I'm going to say it again. You can stop the video right now if you don't want to hear it. Um, always contact a structural engineer before you make any modifications to a building.